Let's learn more about this remarkable project. Recently, the New Yorker magazine and its website featured a profile of the Internet Archive. Nick Thompson is editor of the NewYorker.com. Nick, good morning. Good morning. Uh, I think a lot of us think that everything on the web lives forever. As, <laughs> as David Story pointed out, the average life of a web page is 100 days. Um, so so there is, there's a real purpose to this, isn't there? Oh, absolutely. The web is constantly dying, being reborn, being recreated. Stuff is changing all the time. Really important stuff is disappearing. So the fact that this project exists to save some of it, to save most of it, is very, very valuable to society. You mentioned really important stuff, and I think the article that Jill Lepore wrote, it yeah. starts off with such a great example. Someone basically claiming responsibility for a flight that was down where nearly 300 people killed, and then that would have been gone from the Internet forever had it not been archived. Absolutely. This is the terrible incident that happened this summer where the Ukrainian separatists, you know, the plane, the plane goes down, Ukrainian separatist puts on social media, hey, you know, shot down a cargo plane. Well, picture, it looks, it is in fact, looks like the plane that was actually shot down. It wasn't a cargo plane, it was a civilian plane. Immediately that message gets deleted, but the Internet Archive has saved it. So there's a record, a little bit of preservation, a little bit of evidence, and that really matters to understanding how the world works. How challenging an effort is this to, to archive the entire web? <laughs> well, you can't, right? You have to do the best you can. There's yeah. lots of stuff that disappears. There's lots of stuff that isn't in it. I was just in the Wayback Machine looking for a little design thing in the old New Yorker site. I couldn't find it. I was very frustrated. Um, you can't. You can't archive the entire web. You can't yeah. archive everything that's out there. But this project has been going since 1996, so they've done a pretty good job. I also love that it's called the Wayback Machine. I could yeah. not have picked a better title for all of this. That's, it's a great name for it. What about copyright laws as it pertains to all of this stuff? Well, this is, there's a very Silicon Valley approach to copyright law, which is, I don't know, let's just do what we want to do and see what happens, <laughs> right? I mean, <laughs> right. And so they, copyright law has not caught up to the internet, right? Congress cannot change laws as quickly as the internet evolves. The internet is an entirely, completely, absolutely different thing from what it was in 1996. It takes Congress forever to pass laws. So the Internet Archive has basically just said, you know what? We're just going to get everything we can, and if there's a problem, we'll deal with the problem. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, you know, there's a very different situation in Europe. There are different situations in other countries. The Internet Archive probably could not exist outside of Silicon Valley. Let's face it, there's a lot of junk on the web, you know. So, I mean, <laughs> so how do you, I mean, how do you, I mean, are they trying to be selective here, or do they just, they just sample all of it? You sample all of it. I mean, I think the way to think about the web is it's the sort of, it's kind of a collective human consciousness. It's yeah. what we're all thinking and doing at any given moment. And yeah. we're all thinking and doing a lot of, we're thinking about a lot of junk at a time. Right. Um, yep. Well, so, it's a time capsule, in effect, constantly changing. Right. It's a time, and as the web evolves, it will become something that we can't comprehend. You know, the web 10 years from now will be something we really can't comprehend yeah. right now. So to have a record will tell you a little bit about how it changed, how it evolved, and how our minds and our species, you know. Are changing too. So I think it's important to take everything. That means that they're also sampling things like Twitter, what everyday people are writing then, right. and Facebook, what people are posting pictures of kids and things like that? Well, Facebook is hard to get. Facebook is closed. Facebook has sort of closed itself off from the rest of the web. Um, you try to get everything you can, but there are definitely sites that have sort of created walled gardens. I mean, that's part of what Facebook does is Facebook creates a little sort of walled environment that's harder for right. other people to get inside, view, and search, and navigate. It's interesting because I look at it sort of like looking at commercials I saw as a kid growing up in the 60s, which you'd think <laughs> at the time were useless. But when you see them now, they tell you a lot about how we live. They tell you a ton about how we lived yeah. and what we care about and what we thought and all the little memes inside of them. are amazing. That's a great parallel. Absolutely. Just like the football thing we saw earlier. We were showing people how football games have evolved. It's just like that. Right. It's, it is just like that. And you can actually, you can go back and you can look at NFL.com and see how it presented itself and say 19 you know, 99, yeah. you say, wow, that's really different. That's really interesting, and that's kind of important to have somewhere. Well, your interview is worthy of an archive. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope they save it. Out there in San Francisco, record this, please. <laughs> Thank you.